over the last few days, I've been just playing around in my shop, trying just new stuff and seeing what I could come up with. And I discovered something that was really cool and I just wanted to show you. And that is making my own veneer pieces of wood. Now, of course, veneers have been around for a very, very long time. That's nothing new. But to make them in your shop, well, they're not the easiest thing to do. But I discovered a really cool and simple process that uh, I could make these all day long and do it really simply. So let me show you. Now for those of you who already know how to do this process, awesome. I'd like for you just to see what I'm doing and tell me what I'm doing right and what I'm wrong and just tell me that in the comments so we can help out everybody else. So let's get this started. The first thing I did was to grab a 2x4 and yes I know a 2x4 is not really good for anything fancy, especially if you're trying to do veneers, but it's a good piece of wood to practice on and kind of perfect this method. So that's what I'm going to use. We next need to look at the wood and make sure there's not any major imperfections on here. There are a couple knots, but I think I'm going to leave those because I'd love to see how those look once I slice this up. Now there is some ink on the end here and that might go a little bit deeper than I want. So I think I'm going to slice it right here and cut this ink off, but otherwise, this looks pretty good. Next up, we need to determine about how long of a piece we want for a veneer. Now, with a two by four, there's a very good chance if you go more than a couple feet, that it's gonna be a little bit warped, a little bit twisted, and just make this process really difficult. So, I'm gonna stick with about two feet, and we'll go from there. Now, if you don't have a miter saw like I did to cut this, that's okay. You can use a hand saw to cut this as well. Just make sure it is as close to 90 degrees as possible. But the one tool you will need for this process is a table saw. Now, of course, you don't have to have a fancy one. As long as you can cut straight lines and it can do it repeated cuts over and over again in small increments, preferably like an eighth of an inch. But before we start making our strips, we first need to look at our 2x4. There's a very good chance that all your corners have been rounded over by the fat factory and that won't work real well in this setup so we now need to cut off or just trim off just a small section of this wood so that we can get a nice flat sharp edge and now that we have this side nice and flat I want to flip this over and repeat the process on the opposite side that way I know that both sides are nice and flat you might have noticed on the last cut, I kind of had a happy accident. This is a real thin piece of wood that I got cut off. And uh, well, it's a little too thin for our process. This is probably a sixteenth of an inch or thinner. And it'll just make it a little bit difficult to go to the next step. But it is cool that it cut off like that. The strip size that we're actually going to aim for is going to be about an eighth of an inch. And that should be pretty simple to cut down each time. Because I'm just going to move my table saw fence over a quarter of an inch and then because the blade is gonna remove about an eighth of an inch of wood, that should leave me with an eighth of an inch strip each time. So I'm just gonna repeat that process. Move it over a quarter, cut. Move it over a quarter, cut, and repeat, repeat, repeat. At this point, some of you might be asking, why don't I just use a bandsaw to resaw the wood to get the thin veneers? Well, unless you've been using a bandsaw for a while and you have it set up perfectly, there's a very good chance your wood's gonna be a little bit wavy as you cut it. And I'm trying to make this process a little bit simpler. So instead of having that wavy wood and then having to go over to a joiner or some other tool and make it straight again so you can cut a second one, I figure it's just a lot easier to waste a little bit more wood on the table saw and make this process a lot more simple. I was able to get 10 strips off of this 2x4 with just a little bit left over. I didn't want to go any thinner than that because that's when you start getting really dangerous on a table saw and you could have some major kickback. Also, please sure to make sure to use the right tools when you're doing this so your hands don't get too close to that blade. Do you recall those knots I pointed out earlier? Well, this is what they look like once they're nice and sliced up. They look really cool. Unfortunately, some of these have some big checks and cracks in them so they won't be usable. So once we have everything together later, we'll just have to trim that off. Next up, we're going to take each of the strips and some light duty, this is like 120 grit sandpaper, and we want to gently, and I mean gently, go along the sides or the edges of each of these strips. We're not trying to sand anything smooth. Some of these have little fibers and little splinters sticking off, and all we're trying to do is gently remove those without changing the shape of the wood. Then we want to lay all of our strips out on a flat surface so we can look at all of them at the same time. Then we want to try and match up the ones that look similar. For example, this has some strong grain in it and this one has some strong grain in it. 
And we want to put those two together because when they're matched up, they look a little bit more natural. And then we can put another one next to it, and that one's close, and we can attach these together and it'll look nicely together as one panel. And to attach all of these together, I'm just going to use some basic number two wood glue. When you're gluing these together, I recommend only gluing three or maybe four together at a time. It's just a little bit easier to keep the smaller numbers nice and straight in this process. Versus if you tried to glue all ten together, I can almost guarantee you that something will be a little twisted or a little out of whack when you're done. So when you glue three together, give them time to dry, and then you can glue the sections together as well. And that should end up pretty nice. But before we add the glue, I'm actually going to use some blue tape to help hold everything together. Now using some of the tape, we're going to make some strips. That, then we're going to hold the wood together. And then we're going to take the tape and put it across all three. And make sure it's on there nice and tight so it keeps them together. I then added two more strips of tape right along the seams of each of these strips. And that way it does two things. One, it keeps the glue from seeping through. It also keeps these nice and tight as we go to flip it over and add the glue. For this next step, it'd be nice if you had some kind of a glue spreading tool, but you don't have to have this. We're going to now flare open these pieces, not real big, but just big enough that we can add some glue along the inside of each strip. Then you just use your spreading tool or something to try and make sure that the glue is fully on both sides of your wood. Then you want to lay your strips down on a flat surface like a workbench and you want to push them just all flat and you'll notice you're going to have a bunch of glue squeeze out and that's good. Take a wet rag and we can remove some of that so it doesn't stain the wood. Next we want to add a little bit of weight on top of the wood across uh, several sections to keep it nice and flat. But to do that, you need to separate any kind of wood product away from the wood surface. So I'm actually going to use some zip ties since they're plastic. It should peel up really easy. I'm going to put these down and then put some weight on top of it so it should keep everything nice and flat. I'm going to use some of the pieces that we haven't glued together yet to go right on top of those zip ties. But you can use whatever you'd like. And once I have those in place, I'm going to provide a little bit of weight with a drill and an impact to go right on top of those to hopefully keep everything nice and tight to the table. I'm also going to add a couple little clamps real lightly on the ends just to make sure it stays together. And just a reminder, these clamps are on there very light. You're wanting the tape to do most of the clamping work. These right here just keeps everything from moving around. And once the glue was dry, I carefully peeled off the tape and then I gently went over these with an orbital sander. It doesn't take much sanding to remove any of the edges or unevenness. You're just trying to get this as smooth as possible with the exception knowing that of course these are two by fours are not going to be perfect but they are really smooth to the touch so the question is now is what would I use these for these little strips of veneer are great for smaller crafty type projects for example I made this little box for my wife it has one of those old register type rolls of paper that can go inside and then she can pull it out and rip off if I can get it little note pieces that she can put notes on or put whatever she wants on little lists so she can have and use it. That's definitely one way to use this. Or maybe you can use these in your garage. For example, let's say you have some old shelves that are either stained or you just want to make them look a little bit nicer. You can make a bunch of these, cut them to size. You probably wouldn't even need to sand them since they're in your garage. They'll just slide in and out wherever you need and then you could glue them in place. Totally up to you, but great idea. Now, of course, you don't have to use only two by fours for this process. My neighbor, who's a contractor, had some leftover over a countertop that he was going to discard of and he decided to give it to me to see what I could make from it. So I decided to see if I could do veneers on this one as well. So I cut down several little strips off of this as well. Now of course some of these are not as usable because they have big knots or they have these seams going but a number of these are in really good shape. So I glued several of these together and it came out really nice after a gentle sanding. These look really really good together. Now, of course, there are some knots in them, and you just have to work with that. It depends on the side that you're looking at. You don't see any knots here. Either way, this is a little thicker than the other piece I put together, but this will work great as a veneer as well. I also use the veneers to create another little box here. This is very similar to houses, that little white paper roll. 
but this is definitely a little thicker and a little heavier duty, but you can make some really neat stuff from it as well. Of course, veneers are usually used as like a topper or maybe like an exterior finish over some plywood or something you're trying to make it look a little bit pretty, but it doesn't require you to have a really thick piece of hardwood. Now, of course, I wouldn't suggest that using with pine. It's just not very strong, but hardwood, this should work pretty great, especially if you have a bunch of scraps from a previous projects. You can cut them up really thin and glue them together. That could look really nice. And this is where I really need you to help me out in the comments. Is there an easier way to put these together that you know of that I'm not thinking of? Because I want to help out as many people with this process so they can take advantage of this and use this in your shop or for projects. So please, list that in the comments. Or if you have any questions, please put that in the comments too. And then go down there and help out everybody else with those questions as well. I want a lot of people to have fun with this, to have you know the ability to make their own thin veneers at home using just scrap wood. So please do that and I'll see you in the next video.